day. <laughs> There's going to be a group of people who understand that immediately, and now I have to explain it to you. <laughs> In Critical Role, during the first campaign, they went to, a, and I have to remember this, I, I'm hoping I'm remembering this correctly. It has been about seven years, maybe six since or five since this, but, you know, a long time anyway. Mm. They went to a continent called Marquette, where the uh, appropriate greeting is be pleased. Grog, being Grog, um, didn't pick up on this properly and started saying beep beep, and then that sort of turned into bidet. So now it's just sort of a, a greeting between people um, that has become quite common between fans of Critical Role. Somebody said it to me once in the Five Guys, and I I uh, freaked out a little bit. <laughs> I was wearing one of my critical role masks and they went bidet and I went, oh my god, hi! <laughs> <laughs> it's very cute. Oh god. It's, it, today it's it's just going to be Katie talking. I'm just going to listen. No, no, no. I want to hear your thoughts. Oh god. <laughs> no, I, you have to be the because otherwise I will just talk in weird random circles and I'll accidentally spoil things. So you need to be the one who tells me about things that you like in the series and then I need to be the one to react to that. All right. Hi everyone! I should do the bit before yeah, where we yeah, yeah. <laughs> introduce the podcast. Of us. It's a, it's... Hi everybody! <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That is Lily Kay. Holy shit! Oh my god! It's me. <laughs> hey Katie. Hey Katie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh god. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for so long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 okay, got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, knock knock. Who's that? Have I? Did you say have I? Yes. Okay. Uh, have I who? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> I really thought that, that was going to be something like Dungeons and Dragons related, but no, you've just gone for something entirely different. <laughs> so good uh, uh, okay sure <laughs> fuck you <laughs> it's good yeah, and I... that's fair <laughs> I'll take that I love oh, no, it we can't both drink at the same time yes um, hi everyone I don't if, in case you can't tell we're talking about something that's very important to me today um, <laughs> um, and this is this is the legend of Vox Machina, which is the animated series based on the first campaign of Critical Role, which I have been watching since day one, which is why it's very important to me. Um, I'm wearing my Mike Nine t shirt, my Mike Nine shirt today. It's this, uh, it's, I thought I, I, no, I didn't have any real plans. I just, I, I didn't want to wear any of my t shirts, so I thought this one would be a bit cooler. It's a good shirt. Trouble is, I can't really move my arms beyond this point because they get, <laughs> so I have to yeah, go. You don't know. <laughs> it's fine good show it is a good show yeah um and then uh so when this was coming out i would context we'll go we'll go back a little bit further i think it was about four years ago the uh folks critical role basically announced that they were doing uh, uh launching a kickstarter to fund uh in, i think it's seven hundred fifty thousand to make an animated episode a 122 minute thing of their like something from their previous to their stream story of the campaign of Vox Machina, who were previously known as the Shits. Super high intensity team. <laughs> um, that campaign did really well. Like, re- really, really, really well. <laughs> 8, 88,887 backers, um, and $11 million later, they had enough to make 12 episodes. And then, oh no, 10 episodes. And then Amazon picked them up for an extra two in the first season and then an extra 12 on top of that, which is now how we have The Legend of Vox Machina. I put a lot of money into this myself. I was very proud to do so, still am. Um, and uh, so yeah, once when, when this was coming out, I uh, basically told everybody that knows me and gives any kind of a shit that they have to watch it. It's kind of the law. <laughs> So here we are, because Lily was very kind and did in fact indulge me. <laughs> and this is where I hand this over to you. As I said, you need to be the one to guide this, because I will talk about anything and everything. Because um, I know a lot of stuff, but you only know what's in this series, really, when it comes to these people. So, thoughts? 
uh, well, I've been texting most of my thoughts to you uh, as I was watching Uh-oh. it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I will say what I didn't like first. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Because uh, uh, I am, I'm very picky with this stuff, and I, I made it. I made quite a fuss about it to you as well. <laughs> so, oh right, yes. yes, okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. I start watching this beautifully animated <laughs> series, and in the first, it's it's five like the first five minutes. Yeah, minutes they throw up in my face, which. Even if it's animated, it's fucking disgusting. And I never understood what's the humor behind it. I will never understand it, like, ever. I think it's disgusting. I don't think it should be used as a funny thing. It's not funny. It's disgusting. I usually have problems with my stomach afterwards if I have to watch something like this. And then it happens five minutes later another time. And I'm like, I I literally texted you. Is this like a recurring thing? Because if it is, I am turning it off. Like, yeah. <laughs> so. And I had to I had to be like, okay. I really had to get because I was like, I'm pretty sure it only happens in that first episode. And it was it's it one does. of those things that doesn't bother me. So it, it didn't like it wasn't something that I had made a note of. Like if it's like really bad, it, I can be like, oh that's just gross. It does not bother me on a level that it bothers you. Mm. Like, um, I'm not a fan of it. It it never it's never fun. No. <laughs> it's but not... it doesn't it's it's not i don't find it abhorrent the way that you do mm. um because i know things about you i understand your reasonings behind all of these things um but it, for me i'm just like that's just so killer <laughs> and i'm like yeah, that makes sense of course I'm, and that's what i told you like i also understand that but you know you can do it in a way but it's not in your face and disgusting like you know that the mm. that's why i never watch pitch perfect I turned it off after that first five minutes. I was like, this is just beyond <laughs> it's really disgusting. Bad. It's it's just like, it's not I funny. I do have to like actively not look at that. It's, it's good because I don't know if you know this. There is a second one of those scenes in the movie. I heard, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that I actually turned it off because <laughs> I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> like that, again, that one is also on the level of like, it's so much. It's like farcical because it's like so not realistic. Um, Still, that I, I kind of go. <laughs> although thinking about it, it did just make me. <laughs> it did have a reaction. Then. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I do understand. Yeah. Um, it's it's very fair. Um, but the rest of it. <laughs> uh, well, I will put this little message here. Don't do it. Don't ruin your TV show or movie with this. It's disgusting. It's- I hate to tell you this, but I, I have a feeling they may end up doing it again just because I know what Keyleth is like. But I don't think they'll make it a, a like a regular ongoing I, thing. I sure and the not. likelihood <laughs> is if now I know for sure. And if I because if, if we are getting a series two, that is that is confirmed. Yeah. Um, if it happens again in series two, I will obviously end up watching it before you do. That's just, let's it, be real. Yeah, it, it's fact. <laughs> and I can warn you whenever it's going to happen. Yeah, that, that I will be just, grateful for that. I'll, put in a, I'll, I'll do a little content warning and give you a little timestamp so you, you so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, the other thing uh, that I didn't like is, what, is the waste of David Tennant. I think uh, that he was like I immediately recognized his voice. Oh I was yeah, like, I mean... ah, David, uh, and you know I wanted more of his character and and or or even just his voice. Like I would have been happy with that, and I felt like that that was a bit too quick. Mm-hmm. It, it was a bit like. Oh, okay. We are, I guess I guess we're moving on. <laughs> so uh, I didn't. I I I felt like it was a bit rushed, uh, mm. just a, just a tiny bit for my liking. Especially when they set up this threat as being like you know he literally the the, the dragon literally kills like everyone immediately, uh, and then you know they are just like oh yeah we can do that. Well, okay, but that was that's entirely not the point of the first two episodes. Yeah, ob- they... <laughs> obviously, obviously, I get that, but, but... That, they originally they can't do it, and yeah, then yeah, they yeah, do yeah. do it yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. what D and D is like. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's true, but but still, it felt like uh, okay. So I guess 
that was it. Obviously, I do think that uh, the whole Percy backstory thing was more interesting. Uh, so I, I very much enjoyed that. Uh, but I think they could have left out uh, the dragon part and ah see the thing is they can't um it's actually quite important for stuff that's going to come i figured since you know from the last episode yeah I okay had... yeah. <laughs> I, I figured... morning, we are going to be spoiling all of the series of legend of vox machina i'm going to be talking about some stuff from the campaign but i'm going to try try not to talk about anything beyond what the show has shown us so far at least not in any detail because I do want things later on to be a surprise and very interesting for people who, who haven't or don't have the time to watch, you know, several hundred hours of worth of content, fair. <laughs> which fair. is always fair. I understand it entirely. Yeah. So um, to give you some backstory, because I do understand, I understand the criticism there. Um, this, the, um, when they, I, th- I don't know if they decided to do it. It's been it's been a while since I read uh, the the Kickstarter thing, so I don't remember what they were initially going to do. But we all knew that it was going to be a pre-stream story mm. that was going to in it that was going to start it off. So when they when they managed to make enough for one, and then it ended up being two very quickly, they were going to do like a little put together, like two episodes of something that happened before stream. Everything that you see with Percy and the Briarwoods happened on stream. So this, um, but the story of General Krieg does end up becoming very important to the dragons at the mm-hmm. end of the season mm-hmm. and all of that stuff beyond, which I can't get into, even though it's so meaty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so many things I could talk about. It's so it's it's such a hard little thing because like I really do know so much. Um but yeah, um Krieg was is is one of those things, he was one of those characters that co- talked about a lot, but they'd already by the time the stream had come up, like when they started streaming, um, he was dead and gone already. Like yeah. uh, there is a point later because I think this is this. It's a bit of a spoiler, but it's not huge, so I, I, I am going to go. There is a bit later in the stream where they go back to Krieg's house, and that's how a lot of us who mm-hmm. watched the show knew about Krieg in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it the it, it the, the the yeah i think the reasons for it are mainly production based just because they were like we're going to do this pre-stream stuff and then we're going to move on to the stuff at the briarwoods because the briarwoods was, was kind of the first time on stream where everybody was like oh shit this is kind of real mm. <laughs> it was the first time that matt had kind of put one of the player characters front and center and going we're going into your backstory now here's all your stuff kind of thing um and Talos had already given them so much meaty stuff to work with um and that kind of became everything that we saw there. So it's like, I I, I do agree in that it, it feels very sort of quick in that you've got these two episodes and then they're kind of, they're kind of done with it. But yeah. like, I think when we get the second series, it's going to feel more, inc- like there's going to be, it, it's going to feel more included. Mm-hmm. Um, she says, and then stops talking because she feels like she's going to say something she shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I reckon because... Um, so David Tennant worked on DuckTales, as we all know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam Regal, who is the voice of Scanlan and one of the main cast members of, of mm. Critical Role, um, was the voice director for DuckTales. Yeah, 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 And that's where that connection probably came in. Yeah. I have a feeling, considering they have the connection to David Tennant, they'd be foolish not to bring him back in another mm-hmm. voice capacity, considering Matt also voices pretty much anybody who isn't like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a major character. It's like, and that's what voice actors do. They do multiple people. I mean, mm. Gray Griffin uh, was the voice of um, uh, Percy's mum in the flashbacks. Yeah. Um, Talison did the voice of his own dad. Why not? <laughs> oh, one of those things, you know. I, I feel like they could bring him back in whatever way they wanted and he yeah. wouldn't have to be... Yeah. It, but here, it, it, it felt like it was kind of a waste, <laughs> especially because he was so good. Like, you know, and I just enjoy listening to, the, listening he is to great. David Tennant. So that's, you know, I was like, oh. <laughs> it, well, yeah, it was a bit like, oh, yeah, I, I, well, I also was a bit disappointed that we, we didn't get him for more time. But I reckon if they are um, inclined to, they would they'd absolutely bring him back to do something else um, yeah, yeah, in yeah, later. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of who he could be now. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm just gonna put that away. <laughs> I haven't uh, got anything. Yeah. Uh, should I go on? <laughs> yes, please do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Uh. Oh. Oh. Okay. Where? Where? Where to go? 
uh favorite character i guess like, I, okay I well or... yeah look, okay let's let's do so first of all you liked it <laughs> oh, oh oh yeah that's a fair question i guess <laughs> Because obviously I liked it, but I'm incredibly biased. So there's no reason that I agree with <laughs> my are, but opinion. That's fine. <laughs> really. uh, uh, altogether, I did like it. Uh, I I did feel like that it could improve a lot, uh, um, especially uh, on the front. Like you know, I think these characters are uh, so lovable and fun uh, that uh, you know it's it, it it felt a bit like. You know, I could watch them a bit more. Uh, I like for several hundred hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I even told you that uh, halfway through, I started to think about this uh, as as a live action <laughs> thing mm. as well. So I was like, mm, I could just you know, because I I I always miss uh, really good uh, fantasy live action, and I think this could work very very well uh but uh altogether i did enjoy it a lot uh especially uh, uh as i said uh towards uh the, the percy stuff uh when it all started to happen i was like oh this is interesting uh i i i really liked uh Kaylin, that uh she my girl uh, my girl Kayla. Uh, <laughs> she was definitely one of my favorites she's so pure loved her so okay i'm gonna i'm gonna cut you off here because i yes. want to talk about this a little bit i i mean i've always loved keyleth i've been on team keyleth since very much the beginning mm. when the stream started there were a lot of people who were not very nice to marisha because they didn't like keyleth and they thought that marisha was keyleth in a lot of ways and it was sort of um it was festered with misogyny and um, awful dude bros like gatekeeping because people were like, oh, Marisha can't play. She keeps making all these mistakes. Uh, nah. There's a lot of people that I... So every time somebody goes, oh, I don't like Keyleth, I'm like, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> because I just, in my head, all I can see is the period uh, when the show started or all the people who were like, Marisha's shit. And I'm like, I need you to leave. Obviously, Marisha doesn't need defending mm. marisha can very much defend herself probably better than anybody else could um but it was because you know she's she at the time was dating matt and then obviously now she's married to him yeah. people thought that he was being lenient on her actually if you go back he's quite a lot harsher on her than he is on a lot of other people mm. especially after um a certain original member of the cast left he's not a very good person we don't need to get into that um, it's available to find on the internet if you really want to look into it, but like it's it's fine. Um, uh, there was there was some examples of meta gaming going on at the table, and after this person left, there was Matt had kind of a crackdown sort of attitude, which is kind of it's mellowed out now. They've all figured out how to play with each other and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Um, but it, at the time, yeah, the thing about druids in game is that different from differing from other spellcasters, they have access to literally all of their spells so that at the beginning of every day they can pick and choose which ones they want to have for that day unlike things like wizards who have to learn spells like earn a certain they have to go and like learn spells druids just know all the spells and then they can pick which ones they want to use every day which means that she was constantly with this like massive stack of spell cards mm. cards trying to figure out how things worked and it meant that sometimes she got things wrong and also keyleth the whole thing is that she wasn't particularly you know yeah, sure of herself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it made meant that she made she made some she made some mistakes. Mm -hmm. I love, but the, what the show does with her is so gratifying because she is the most powerful member of this party, mm -hmm. bar none. <laughs> she, <laughs> the 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 heights that she will get to in later, um, you know, times. By the time they did a a, a level twenty player versus player sort of um, battle royale. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no question she she wiped the floor with a lot of them because she is the most powerful member of this fucking party. Yeah. Um, we're getting to see her grow into herself and like actually be the most powerful member of this party. I cried every <laughs> single time. I cried when she did it in in the keep. I cried <laughs> when she did it. Um, she did the Dorolo symbol outside. I cried when she managed to hold off a bunch of the um the undead with her uh, ice storm, mm -hmm. and I sobbed like a child when she unleashed that um, sunbeam 
yeah, yeah. on Silas Briarwood in the last in the second to last episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really proper weeping. So yeah, Keila's got a lot of like I'm I'm so happy that they they managed to get her so right. Because mm. that was when I was it was I was worried about it. They all got all the women in this show spectacularly done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm very thrilled about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, I, oh. I like Pike a lot as well. Oh it's, uh, uh, obviously, that's Ashley Johnson, who we, <laughs> you know, she's a big favorite of mine. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, I just can't get over how absolutely talented Laura Bailey is. Who's, that's, uh, that's, that's Laura fucking Bailey. Like, I, once again... I literally, after the first episode, I had to look up uh, IMDb, who's who, because I couldn't recognize her voice. And that often happens with Laura. Like, when uh, she does something, it, it's just, it's not her. It's not her. It's not that normal. Is, that, is, <laughs> that is her, like, that's Vex. Every time I hear her, I'm like, that's the Vex voice. Yeah. Um, but it's it's genius. Like, I, she's so, so talented. Uh, I, I very much... I first I didn't like her character. I'm gonna say this. Well, that's the thing. Vex is interesting because she is sort of like, she's kind of a dick. Yes, <laughs> but like very intentionally. So she's she's you know, her whole you know life has revolved around Vax. Mm. Like the two of them have only had each other for the longest time. So all of her behavior kind of comes from that. Um, I, I love that they, they didn't die, you know, take that down or, or anything. Oh, yeah, but it's yeah, a sort yeah. of like inter-party sort of like jealousy that she kind of has. And there's, there's, there's a lot of codependency going on between her and, and Vax. Mm. I like yeah. Vax as, as well a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. I already know that Vax is my boy. Yeah, he's, he's great. <laughs> I've said it every time. I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was great. He was my great. reckless child. <laughs> And uh, I very much enjoyed how they built up the Kaylith and, and Wax story uh, line, even though I was very disappointed by the end. Okay. As I said, I was like... Would you like me to go into some stuff about how Vax and, and Vax yes. and Kaylith are a thing? So I will go up into a certain, to what we've gotten in the show, like I said. Um, in the show, so in the scene when Percy goes to find Cassandra and he's being she's being held by Anders and her throat gets cut, mm. right? Um, in in on stream, um, the person to barge into the room was Vax instead of Percy, mm-hmm. and they got into a big brawl. Cassandra got her throat cut. They managed to save her, and it was all fine, like they did in the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Vax got really busted up, and he had to get brought back. And he's like, "It's one of my favorite moments of the stream." Um, but because obviously they, they don't have as much time and there's not a lot, whole lot they don't have all the build up until this was about 30 episodes in at this point mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. Um, I, can see, I can see because I have a there's a piece of art by um, uh, an artist her name's Wendy uh, Wendy Doodles um, on on Twitter she's done um, stuff for them for since the beginning um, so I can I can see it really clearly in my head there's Vax holding his like stab wound and he's like oh man that was a close one huh and she's like oh yeah you really have to stop like going in and like barging into places and getting yourself killed because Vax is he goes first and is very reckless mm-hmm. and then he goes you know I'm in love with you right which is he says in the show yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he kisses her <gasps> Assholes. They, took, they took out the kiss <laughs> I actually think that taking them taking out the kiss at this point wasn't a bad thing because it was <laughs> n- no <laughs> listen to me it wasn't technically speaking a particularly consensual kiss and it was it didn't go it didn't you know, go down as well with some people who watched it. They found it a bit uncomfortable, and I understand. And I think that the way mm-hmm. that they're building to it makes a lot more sense in this format. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing I don't like that they did is that because um, then Keyless does then turn him down because she's like, "I've got a lot of stuff to think about. I've got my Armente to do. This is very sudden for me. I don't know how I feel about this. That kind of thing." Mm-hmm. Um, in a perfectly, you know, understandable and reasonable way. Um, Keyless, all a lot of Keyless feelings for Vax are there. There is something there, and I think they do represent that on her side as well as Vax's. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the way that they handled Vax going to her at the in that last episode and her being like, "Oh, hey, these are all the things." Understandable. He was a lot more eloquent, and I think that's just a Liam thing, though, because <laughs> Liam is like the most Shakespearean, incredible actor. I just I, I've said it many times. He is my favorite actor i think 
I love watching him perform properly. Mm. Um, he, I wish I, I should have looked this up before. He had this whole speech that he kind of gave to him. He goes, look, if you don't want me, I'll back off. But if you do, I'm right here. Mm. And I'm leaving this entirely in your hands. I'll take, like, I'll wait if, if I have to and mm. all that sort of stuff. And then, and then he walked away because that's what Vax does. He walks away from conversations, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was very cute that they managed to get that in there when he was like, I'm going to walk away because <laughs> so often, so often Liam would finish a conversation with, and I walk away. Uh, okay. But I, I think they're building it up properly because this is a TV show. And like, I think that having that kiss at that point would have, and I th- I like the fact that she had, this is the worst time. I mean, she was right. <laughs> it was kind of the worst time. Um, but it was, it, I, I, I understand why they, <laughs> I understand why they made some of the changes. I wasn't thrilled with the, the sort of then reaction of Vax post her kind of shutting him down a bit. Mm. That's all. There's stuff later. But that's later, and I'm shutting up about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This so, is a very conscious effort on my part because I just want I to keep tell. talking. <laughs> I can tell. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely like that as well. I think uh, uh, the fights in uh, were, were really well done. Uh, even if at some points I felt they were a bit all well, like, wait, like I would have literally watch them just have more conversation than fight at some point <laughs> if that lie, this is how i get in actually watching critical role because i have a tendency to fall asleep during combat unless now that i've played more D, just because i have a bit of sort of understanding of how the sort of you know flow of it feels yeah but in previous years i have been known to put on long fights and fall asleep halfway through them fair fair um yeah they, they i mean but, but like you know fights in D that is sort of part of the bread and butter of it really isn't it yeah 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 it is um and what else what else what else um i like percy but at the same time <laughs> <laughs> what yes <laughs> uh uh i was pretty I, like i figured it was a demon at right at the beginning when <laughs> when it first happened Percy's fucked up <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> yes uh by the end even after he he got you know rid of the demon I was like huh I don't know yeah um Percy yeah I love Percy very dearly mm. mostly for because he's like it, it, honestly watching people get that sort of shift because he is so like mild mannered and like this is what decorum is like and then suddenly he <laughs> shoots yeah, up yeah, a man's yeah. hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny watching the end of episode two and then seeing Desmond on the back on the on the on the carriage with pulling the Briarwoods along to uh, Imon to, to um to see uh, the sovereign and do that whole thing. I was like, that man is about to have a very bad day. <laughs> yeah. Poor poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh poor Desmond. Um, yeah, Percy's not well is the <laughs> main thing that you're in. And Percy, despite the fact that, you know, they've managed to save Whitestone and um, all of this stuff, Percy will not be well for a very long I time. I figured, yeah. Um, it's one of my favourite things. I think Talzin did such an incredible job with creating this because, like, the whole conceit of the, his character was he was the man who invented the gun in, mm. this, uh, in this world. He's yeah. the man who invented this, in- this terrible, like, weapon... Um, and he couldn't take it back after it happened. Um, and the lasting consequences are still being seen in, in various, um, you know, in the campaign since, which have been very, I love the way Matt weaves these things in. Um, it's just very funny to me being people be like, oh, Percy seems kind of fun and, and interesting. And then suddenly <laughs> he puts on his mask. Yeah, he I like that. Though. <laughs> and yeah. everybody's like, oh God, this guy's a little fucked up. Who isn't? Uh, My favorite thing was seeing somebody tweet. Um, like uh, it was like a group. It was like a group of people who were watching it, and it was like a couple of people who'd seen all the show, and then another person who had never seen the series. And the person getting to that that third episode and being like, "No, Percy, you're better than this," and the other two being like, "No, he's not." Because <laughs> yeah, he's he's not entirely. But I I, I appreciate that about him. Yeah, yeah you know I I've. Uh... I found him to be 
one of the most interesting characters, to be honest. He uh, is. Uh, I, I very much enjoy that they went into his story. Uh, oh, the other thing I will say uh, that was a bit weird for me or a bit off was Pike's okay. story. Like, you know. Would you like me to explain that? Uh, yes. Okay. So within the stream, when literally when they started streaming, Ashley Johnson got a job in New York, which would become Blind Spot, mm. which she was on the show for five years. Yeah. Um, and it meant that regularly she'd not be available to play because she was in an entirely different time zone on the other side of the country. And they, she'd come back in whenever she could. And she was kind of, she'd jump in and out. This happened throughout all of campaign one and most of campaign two. Yeah. And it meant that a lot of her story wasn't really available because she wasn't available and and, and, yeah. and Pike went away for uh, for a lot of things. I was wondering if they were just going to like make it so that she was there the entire time. But I, I do like that they let her go on like her spiritual journey to kind of figure out herself out. I think that was a beautiful way of them mm-hmm. for them to do that. Um, but yeah, it just it's literally like that because she just wasn't there for a lot of it. And this is that was their way of fixing that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it felt a bit weird because mm. I did actually like the character a lot. Like, you know, obviously it makes sense this way. Uh, but for someone who hasn't seen any critical mm. role or, you know, not not part of that uh, whole thing, uh, I, I think it was a bit weird. Uh, it was like, oh, why, why is she? Oh, okay, okay. Like, you know, they still got back to her and obviously it was interesting to see. But uh, yeah. I, 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 I would have enjoyed even more Pike in, <laughs> in this show. So. We'll get more Pike, don't you worry. Yeah, I, I, I bet we will. I bet we will. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I really, I, I like Grog as well. I think he was a lot of fun. He's, 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 he's like me, <laughs> like my character Sam. <laughs> Just... Yeah, um, Grog is, she's Sam has intelligence. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Grog in. In D and D terms, he has an intelligence of six, which means he has a minus two modifier to all of his intelligence Aww. stuff. He's oh, he technically can't read and doesn't Aww. understand numbers because, but he's a sweetheart, you know, he gentle is. giant sort of thing. He and he and Pike grew up together, and, and the, I love the way that they kind of showed that. Yeah, that was like so just good. like if you start trying yelling louder, it's like maybe you should say sorry. And I'm like, Grog, please, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> that was cute. I really, I really like that. And uh, so yeah, but uh, all together, you know, it was uh, it was very fun. I like how freely they were talking. Like you know, uh, I loved how violent it was. <laughs> I I really much very much enjoyed that. Um, uh, yeah, there could be some you know improvements along the way that I I think uh, might be needed. Uh, but the animation was great uh it, it really was beautiful i like how uh they did the characters as well i don't know you know because i know you showed me that uh you know there are My a artwork. lot of uh, yeah there are a lot of artworks uh going around and uh i don't know if they if this is their own design or if they took this this is this was the design of of um phil barbosa who is the lead I think character designer at Titmouse, which is the production company. So that oh, okay. that's though that a lot of it comes from obviously years worth of fan art, but like and then putting their own spin on it and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Uh but uh yeah, altogether I think it was really fun. Uh I think it was uh, very much enjoyable and, and watchable for those who are not watching Critical Role in general. Uh I did started watching it like a few few months back uh but i haven't gotten far but it's 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 usually you started the... watching with campaign too though didn't yeah, you yeah 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 mm. but it's 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 usually in the background uh when i'm drawing so it's it's it's, it's, it's a good way to watch it to be yeah, yeah 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 uh so you know it's new to me as well but i i think it was uh yeah as i said i think it was very enjoyable even though i don't know any of the <laughs> <laughs> back stuff that's that's going on and and obviously these people are extremely talented um uh, as as voice actors and as storytellers as well uh so yeah i I think it was great i think it was it wasn't perfect i wouldn't say that i um, also wouldn't say it was perfect i'm just still thrilled 
with how well it went anyway right oh, yeah, yeah. it's like it, it, it did still like it hit a lot of spots for me that were very important so many of percy's lines that you hear were just things that talison said mm. I, I cannot tell you how happy I was that so many of the stuff that they just like, because I mean, you can't get better than um, um, uh, turning to Ripley and go, you're the most, you're the luckiest person in Whitestone. Do you know why? Because you're at the bottom of my list. That's just something Talison said. <laughs> he improvised that. Yeah. Because he's insane and incredible. And um, oh my gosh, so much, so much of Percy is is just Talison being ridiculously talented. What I want to ask you about, because I want yes. to go back to some of the stuff that made it into the show that was just taken straight out of the stream. But mm. because we haven't spoken about him yet, what are your thoughts on Scanlan? <laughs> I loved him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was it was fun. <laughs> like, you know, I don't know. It was like it felt at first it felt a bit out of place I would say like it was like been like no okay <laughs> I, I guess we're rolling with this but then it became just fun <laughs> like you know that's the, a lot of the people's relationship with Sam <laughs> <laughs> just Sam just doing something like why are you doing this okay I guess we're doing this now and I'm being like this is this is great I'm very much enjoying myself now <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah so, you know, I if it felt like me a little bit, just, you know, I got into D D with Katie and the gang. Hello gang. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and it, I didn't know anything. So I just, you know, let's go into somewhere we shouldn't, because why not? <laughs> I'm making people disappear this, because why not? You, you, you turned up. I can't. My 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 lovely rogue who doesn't is so angry and like and 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 moody has become an adult and she doesn't like it. Someone has to take care of Sam. Somebody okay? has to take care of everybody. I'm like, why am I doing this? I... You're you're the mom of the group. I don't. But I I I build her because I didn't want to be that because I'm already a mom in like all my friends. I was like, I can't be, I can't turn it off though. Apparently, it just is no. a thing. I'm like, I can't, I can't let you be this stupid. <laughs> it's in you. <laughs> it's it's in too me. much me. I can't let it go. You can't let it go. Uh, but yeah, I, I like Scanlan. I was like, oh, it's, it was very fun because I watched the first three episodes like three times in in the space of a week, just yeah. sort of um, out of like, um, I watched the first three. I went, I watched the first episode early, first two episodes early because yeah. they were part of the um. The, the backer awards um and then obviously i watched the and then i watched the third episode on the friday it came out and then i watched all three of them in tandem because i wanted to see what that was like and then they did a watch long party so i watched them again <laughs> and i will say going to bed on monday night when i watched it the second time with um pull on my beads of love <laughs> in my head was like oh the music was Sam. great by the way <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing oh. amazing i mean the music is incredible neil it McCree, is. um a cree neil a cree sorry yes is it mccree oh god no i got his, his name is neil i know that for sure i just don't remember exactly how his last name goes <laughs> um uh did an incredible job with the music i love how they've incorporated the main theme from the second campaign, which mm -hmm. was called Your Turn to Roll. It's a great little song. Uh, into the main sort of theme. It, mm -hmm. Like I hear it constantly, it pops up. I'm like, eh. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it makes me very high. I can't find it now. This is very annoying. <laughs> I have to, I, I want to credit him properly. It is a Cree. That's right. Thank ah, you. There you go. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, the music was all incredible. Yeah, Sam helped good. write obviously all the songs because he's Sam and he, so Sam in the campaign, because he's a bard, and it's his job to tell stories through song, and part of his ability is called something called bardic inspiration, mm -hmm. which can be given out by him singing mm -hmm. these little ditties. And what he'd do in the campaign is take popular songs and then change some of the words for the sake of the... Um, <laughs> obviously, they can't do that in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they created new songs, but like... Um, I, I love the way that they they incorporated his stuff. I like the fact that they showed Scanlan as an intelligent person because he is kind mm. of the clown, but he's he's very, he's very smart. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is, is Scanlan? Yeah. Um, they're bu they're they're building in some stuff that's going to pay off later in terms of how some of the group treat him. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll say on that. But every time it happened, I went. <laughs> <laughs> 
and so did and pretty much everybody else I know who's seen the campaign. It's like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, yeah. So right, some of the stuff yes. that made it into the show that was just straight out of like, um, uh, it was so wild to me seeing the fight with the Briarwoods in the third episode because, and I said this, I think I don't know if you, I said this to you specifically or if it was the to our D and D group um, when it when those first three episodes drops. It was like I'd seen it before mm -hmm. because in some ways I have seen it before, but like it, even the visuals made it seem like I'd seen it before. There's something about when you play D and D, you do kind of create the whole thing in your head. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter that you know you have like little maps and all this sort of stuff, but in 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 your head you kind of do have this sort of sense of what everything looked like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So watching Vax break into the Briarwoods room, I remember that whole session so clearly because they ended that on a cliffhanger it was it was the Briarwoods coming in finding Vax there and it was suddenly like Vax is gonna die next week I guess <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the end of the episode and everybody like being absolutely terrified um uh the jumping out the window the 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 fact that the Briarwoods are as hot as they are because they can get it let's be real here they're very they, they're evil but they're hot um I love the uh, uh, yeah everything him that whole battle we literally felt like somebody had taken it out of my head and then just put it in front of me i was like it was so blown away by the whole thing mm. um uh i'm trying to think of other stuff i mean this because there's i mean there's so much um yeah like i said a lot of percy's lines came straight out of um mm. your soul is forfeit that's just talisman um, oh, oh oh wait my favorite okay thing. Mm -hmm. the new thing i learned and mm -hmm. I use it constantly now. Fuck a duck. <laughs> I'm just so surprised you didn't. You had that was not in your repertoire no. or anything because I was like, because that's that's a, that's an old one. I don't use it I as much, but it, it is one I, I I I have loved for a long time. Oh god, I love it. Fuck a dog. I was like, I died. Fuck a duck. I, I, I had oh, the to doors. stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, keep going. No, I had to stop the episode because I laughed so hard at that line. Like, it's, it's so random, but I was like, I'm cracking off so L hard. Liam is the master of those sort of like completely drab um, reactions to the lines, like um, like Scanlon being like, let me tell you the story of Vox Machina. Going, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> He's so good at those. Yeah. But um, everything that they managed to do with the doors, absolutely killed me. Vox Machina had a real issue getting through doors. They just became oh, yeah, sort of was... number one en enemy. Yeah. That whole thing with the <laughs> team backdoor, also innocently <laughs> taken straight from the campaign. I liked when they... I don't remember where they tried to break in. I think it was the prison? The prior Yeah, no, the, when, they were, when they're breaking Archie out of prison. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yes, that and, whole sequence and, is inspired by something very specific. <laughs> climbs up to the window and then just falls I'm down. going to go find a window. <laughs> I fell out of the window. Yeah, that was just so fun. <laughs> so I, because I had, honestly, that whole sequence in the show, I think, I mean, I love the way that they did it in the series. The way that it happened in the campaign is more ridiculous because they weren't yeah. in combat and the door they were trying to get into was only locked by a wooden beam on the inside. It took them three spells. Scanlan lost hit points. Oh, God. Because <laughs> they were like, we have to get this door open. Vax gets out his tools, and then he's like, oh, there's no lock. All right, we have to get inside. Um, okay. All right, I'll just dimension door, which is like a, it's like a teleport spell that, that mm. Scanlan has, ends up in there. And then he can't lift up the thing because he's too small and too weak, he, and he rolls badly. Um, Percy takes out his rapier. They try to use that as a leverage. That Scanlan cuts his hand. <laughs> he could cast Unseen Servant to try and help him from the other side of the door. That doesn't help. Vax breaks in through a window. <laughs> and then they just use what is known as in the show Scanlan's hand. Or Bigby's hand in the, in, in mm. the thing. Obviously, they can't use Bigby because Wizards of the Coast. Um, <laughs> and, and they ended up using that to, to open. It was an entire like 20 minute section of gameplay where they just couldn't get through this fucking door doors the, the real it's enemy it's not a door it's a thing of evil <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it and it happens. was those three i just it was it's so gratifying that whole that whole thing mm. um trying to think of other stuff that was big and important um the orthax fight was incredible orthax is the name of the demon i don't know if they ever mentioned that in the series uh, maybe. 
I think maybe Orthax refers to himself as Orthax at some point, but his name is Orthax, just so you know. That was the most incredibly realized thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, it was very well done. I was so thrilled. The mm. whole thing, I, I loved how they, I, I can't remember exactly how they actually did that fight in the, I know he became manifest outside of Percy yes. somehow, but um, the visuals of it were stunning. Yeah, very, I very loved well how mm. big and oppressive and that whole thing was. I was really hoping that they went, would be able to get across the fact that Orthax was the one that kind of quietly designs for the gun and, and, and like led him down this path of murder and like and the oh my god the way that they had like the one eye mm. and then the other eye and just how ter- oh yeah it's it was the other thing that was was um vex going to percy and being darling take off the mask yeah that was a big one in the series that's a big one for people who love um that ship um in, in oh there's in, a ship in, Oh, there are many fi- ships. There are many ships. There are ships everywhere. Oh. Um, a lot of them got represented. I love the fact that they got to, we got to see a little bit of Keyleth and her actual but a crush on, on Vex. Mm. It's like one of those things that kind of prickled underneath for the entire thing. I like the fact that we got a little bit of it. You've obviously got Vax and Keyleth. You've got Percy and Vex who have kind of a thing. I'm not saying any more than that. Um, I figured. Uh, so Scanlan evil. and Pike. Um, Grog doesn't really... Grog's just Grog. Grog's <laughs> just Grog. He's... Just grog. <laughs> he's, grog. he's He's gonna vibe, you know. Mm. He'll he'll go to a brothel yep. <laughs> once in a while, um, that kind of thing. But yeah, that's um, oh my gosh, I just love so much of it. I love how much they managed to get in there um, from from the campaign. When the dragons attacked, they spent a few episodes after saving Whitestone, going and like kind of pissing about a bit, mm. um, and it got to a point where. That a lot of them, and facts in particular, were like, "Why the fuck? What the fuck are we doing here? Why are we together? We're not actually completing anything. We've done this one big thing, but like, what else? Like, what is the point of us at this mm-hmm, point?" Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> same episode, maybe twenty minutes later, they're like, "Oh, Sovereign Uriel is going to make a uh, an announcement from from um in front of the uh, I don't remember what the um is um in the Cloud Dock District. Let's put it that way." Um, and they're like, oh, okay, I guess we'll go down and we'll see, and blah, 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 blah. And then Matt describes these four dragons appearing and basically just taking apart the entirety of um, Iman. Uh, and it was like, this was about, four, we were about 40 episodes into the stream at this point. So it's been nearly a year's worth of streaming. Mm-hmm. And then Matt just was like, I'm going to destroy everything I built. You want some purpose? <laughs> Here's four dragons. That's some purpose. <laughs> yeah, some purpose. Um, so the the fact we're getting this um, in the next season is very exciting. We I figured this was probably going to be the case. Mm. Uh, the way that they do it. Mm. Pardon me. <laughs> um, but it it is it's very. There's going to be a, there's going to be a lot more. Uh, going to get it's going to get real dark. I. Um, I know it's already been dark, but it's gonna get dark. <laughs> it's like it, it's already been there, but okay. <laughs> mm, it's gonna no, trust me, it'll get more dark. Fair. It won't get dark in the same way Percy gets dark, but it'll get dark in a different way, okay. in a sad sort of way. Oh yay! Sad um, stuff again. <laughs> we like that. Um, I just realized there's a very important person we haven't spoken about, and he's um the most important NPC. Um, and his name is Gilmore. Oh. Please tell me that you loved Gilmore because <laughs> Gilmore is so important to all of us. Yes. We can glorious Gilmore. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I did. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, just Gilmore. Oh my gosh. I just, I, I, I feel like there's more stuff I should want to pick apart, but I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know where to go. I don't, like, you know. Yeah, fair. And also, our time is running short now. Yeah. Uh, so I will ask you one more question before we okay. go. And that would be, what would you change or would you change anything uh, in Series 2? Mm. Big questions. Um, it's hard to say because I feel like I can see a lot of things that they're setting up to pay off later. So it's like, I don't I don't know how they're planning on, on, on going for it. Mm-hmm. Um, they need to do a bit more of a focus on Vex and Vax next season. Um, 
just for the sake of like story stuff. And I think that they, I I imagine they are planning on doing that, but like there needs to be like Vax definitely needs to be a little bit more front and center for some stuff. Um, uh, uh, Yes, that's kind of the only thing, big thing I'd like to see. Um, Everything else they did, they've done such a good job. I because it's such a monumental task, you know, mm. like uh, it, the hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of 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 content that they've had to like strip down and the, to the bare essentials and be like, what is the story beats here that we need to hit within twenty two minutes of an episode, right? Yeah, and being able to they and they did such an incredible job. I think the the Briarwoods arc was absolutely the right place to start with it because like it was so character focused and there was like a purpose to go. They they go to Whitestone and figure out what's going on with the family and yada, 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 yada. Um, yeah, it's, yes, tra- tackling the dragons is going to lead to some interesting stuff. I really have no idea how they're going to do that because mm. the arc went from, I think, episode like something 40 or maybe just before, maybe hit episode 39 to like episode 70. It lasted a very long time. Yeah. There was a lot of steps they had to go and do before they could actually take on and they, they incrementally um, they take, they take down these dragons. Um, so I have, I just, I just hope that they, they manage to keep that pace properly. I hope that we get a bit more of Keyleth's side of the Vax and Keyleth thing. That's mm. the, um, because that I think her learning to to kind of open up herself like that is very important to her yeah. character stuff. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I hope that we get a little bit more because I've I've seen some people point it out as like yeah there is a reason that Scanlan is a bit of a punching bag and it will be paid. I, I I know that why they're doing that and it will be paid off in a certain way. But I do hope we get to see more of Scanlan being quite competent. I just realized one of the things we didn't talk about was the entire um, Scanlan solo mission because that was one of the most glorious oh, things that, was, that you've yeah. ever seen fucking seen on stream. <laughs> Holy shit, Bard's a clutch. You should have seen, like, the, they actually, they had to they had to kind of bring him down a peg in the show because Sam just killed it, uh, like, on his own, managed to, to take down this entire house. Like, they make it seem like it was more, it was kind of an accident, the way that it ended him. Sam did the most incredible like D D playing you've ever seen in your life um taking down that house on his own um the whole thing was known as scambo it was great sam had a tie tied around his head <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun um but i hope that we get to see more of the there's there's a very important thing uh uh that needs to be revealed about scanlan and that i think will um be the impetus for a lot of stuff that will pay off uh, a bit later um yeah, uh, it's, it's so hard to to say things without saying things, you know. Yeah, there's yeah, there's there's some things that I'd like to see, but I don't know how. It, it's like it's such like I said, it's such a task. Mm. It's like I can't be the like it's it's it, they've do, they've done such an admir- admirable job of it anyway. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. It, it was really fun. Uh, I, is I, there something that? Yeah, I was gonna turn yeah. the t- question back around on you and say, <laughs> is there something that? just as an outside perspective that you feel like needs to be fixed um i'm not at first i was thinking pacing but that's not the correct word here a little bit maybe i don't know i uh, i do understand there were some things i was like mm, 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 mm. yeah yeah but like it, like i said it's so difficult that i'm is. like yeah 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 i i understand that especially now uh, uh, that i i i also join uh, uh the whole dna hype basically and uh yeah it, it takes a long time uh and uh you know i i get i get it uh and uh, i i also think that they did a good job uh so far i think just more character build up i guess mm, i think that's part i think that's kind of what i'm touching yeah. on i just i yeah. just want more of them just, yeah 
Yeah, basically. <laughs> I, 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 as I said, I enjoyed the fights and, you know, this, the, the backstory of Percy is uh, very interesting and I think very well done. But I need more from the others as well, I guess. Like, you know, that's what I would get into a bit more. Obviously, it, it can be done all together because that would be too crowded. But uh, I, I think they could find a way where it could become a very interesting thing. Mm. So, yeah. But that's it, basically. Mm. I would say the one thing I'm interested to see what they just if they if they decide to do anything because Grog never really had like a I mean he had a couple there were there was some stuff but not to the extent like Percy did right of like character like very focused things mm-hmm. um, so I'm interested to see what they decide to bring front and center for Grog because I they have to I mean Travis is incredible um, he's an incredible talent he's very funny mm. also does drama incredibly well um, uh, so I am. Oh man, just had like a certain moment pop into my head, which I can't talk about, but like, fuck me. Um, I have a feeling that um, anybody who is watching who is familiar with it may may know what moment I'm talking about. Who knows? Comment um, down below. <laughs> I would love to hear people. Say. Um, actually, as a point, if you are going to comment on our video, which we, we'd love you to, please comment on our video because yes, it, it, and you know, rate us on your various podcast platforms and share us with your friends, all of these things. Um, if you do comment and you are familiar with the show, like the the streamed D and D series, please try not to spoil anything for people who might be coming in who haven't seen it, like Lily, who will be checking the comments. Um, if you do really want to talk about stuff, give a real big spoiler thing underneath, like you know, yeah. the whole, all the dots and all that sort of stuff. Just make sure you you, you spoil the like spoiler tag the hell out of it as much as you can, or you can just tweet me because I'll have I'll have thoughts. <laughs> that's true <laughs> but like commenting on our video is nice as well yeah uh all righty then this was our uh review i guess <laughs> my babies uh, i on, love them on, so much on your babies uh i'm glad i ended up watching it uh I, it was always planned so <laughs> yeah um but, but yeah, they're, they're, can yeah. They're all more. very important to me in a way that i um uh, i love the mighty nine who are the campaign too Lot and I, I'm beginning to get very attached to the campaign three um, mm. crowd, but the uh, Vox Mark and the Hots are very, very little special place in my heart, um, particularly Vax. So I hope that whatever they, I mean, Liam's already doing the most with Vax as, as, as I wanted, and it's so emotional for me to even hear him again. But it's like, um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for more of it. Uh. Yeah. Uh, Kate is very happy now, guys. Uh, and to make her emotional. even happier or emotional, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Mm. <laughs> leave that like button. Uh, what? 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 I can't talk. Uh, yeah, leave that. the like button. <laughs> leave it alone. Like. No, don't leave it. No. <laughs> no. Like. <laughs> Hit, like. It. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> That's the one. And uh, you know, follow us on Spotify, where you can now rate us as well. So please don't forget to do or that. Or any other podcasting platforms. I understand some people are not a fan of Spotify at the moment. Totally fair. Yeah. We're on all of them. If you go through Anchor, it tells you all of the various podcasting things that we're available on. Yep. Uh, so please do that. And we will be back next week with the review of the Batman. Uh, yes. Wait, Batman's on Friday, right? For you. For me, it's on Thursday. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, the, it's the fourth, right? For you. <laughs> but I'm just wondering if the fourth is actually a Friday. No, it is a Friday. Kind of a... <laughs> uh, but yeah, we will see you all next week. Love you all. Bye. Goodbye, friends. Bye.